we are all grateful to be here today. I think I'm going to make this uh, a little bit short because I don't have much time. I pray I don't get so excited and go above the time. And I think we're going to be reading from uh, 1 Corinthians, the chapter number 15. 1 Corinthians, chapter number 15. I'll be reading from 14 to 16. Verse number 14, it says, And if Christ be not risen, then is our preaching vain, and your faith is also vain. Yea, and we have found false witnesses of God, because we have testified of, of God that he raised up Christ, whom he raised not up. If so, be that the dead rise not. For if, the, for, if, for if the dead rise not, then is not Christ raised. Amen. You see, when you look at these lines, when I look at it, a question comes to mind. And the question is, what if Christ, or what if there is no resurrection? Can you conjecture in your mind? Because... What we are virtually saying here is that what is happening is everything we are doing and everything we are preaching and what Paul is virtually saying, because if I want to bring you back to speed, you start reading from the beginning of that chapter 15, he's actually establishing something there and saying that there, there's, there's every proof, there's every fact that Christ is risen and there's something he wants to defend there, which is all about the fact that even those who had gone to sleep before us in Christ are going to rise up with him at, during the resurrection. So that's actually the point that he is making here. And so he gets to this point now, and he's asking them and calling on to us to just conjecture in our minds that if there were no resurrection, to buy, so if the resurrection did not exist, if it were not there. So the very first thing that is going to happen that you're going to realize is that if Christ be not risen, then our preaching, that is Paul is now looking at what he is doing together with the apostles, and maybe us also today, if Christ is not risen, then what we are virtually doing, we are just putting out empty words. Then our preaching is empty. It is useless. Because now the resurrection becomes the basis of our faith. And it goes also to the believer, because if the believer also believes in the emptiness of what we are preaching, it means that their faith is also empty. No basis. If the resurrection is not true. That is what Paul is saying. So everything he's presenting here is on the basis that if the resurrection were not true. So getting your mind walking to a place where you come to realize that what he wants you to understand is about the veritability of the resurrection. Mm -hmm. Because that is the only reason why we are sitting here today singing these songs coming here on Fridays to pray, calling our brothers and saying, oh, uh, you are in Christ. Because if not, then we should leave it. Everything is empty. The only thing that makes our belief who we are, sons of God, take note, I didn't say Christians. I said sons of God. What makes us different is this whole resurrection story. And he continues in the same vein that if also it's that uh, 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 Christ did not rise from the dead and we move about preaching that, it means that they are, or we also today, are false witnesses of God. Which means that we are moving around saying that God raised up Christ from the dead and that is what he did not do. So we are virtually liars and false witnesses. So you see where he is taking it to. He wants your mind to walk towards the direction that there is a resurrection. And it is this resurrection on which you stand. And out of that resurrection, there you don't have anything. So he placed and puts the basis and makes the ground for everything and lets you stand in a place of now assurance and making you know that because he walks, you know, well, I don't want to go into all that big grammar. I want to keep it simple. Because, you know, there is a way Paul presents his arguments most of the times. 
where he tries to show you the, the kind of uh, the absurdity in a hypothesis that people might have had by proving to you his conclusion that actually contradicts that hypothesis that people might have had in their minds. So here, what he's trying to let us know and letting us get it is the fact that there is a resurrection mm -hmm. and the fact is this resurrection is, has become the foundation of the preaching. It has become the foundation of your belief. It has become the foundation to the justification of the fact that we are true witnesses of the Father. So you realize that uh, if, if there is no principle of, of, of resurrection and if Jesus did not rise from the dead, then the apostles and all of us gathered here today are liars. And whom are we lying to? We are lying to ourselves. And I, don't, I want you to conjecture in your mind <laughs> that you have been wasting your whole life if that were the case. And if that were not the case, <laughs> if that were not the case then the joy of that salvation should encompass your life that resurrection you should be that 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 resurrected person that life that you have we want to see it flourishing in you because i've told myself i want to see it in my life if you don't want to see it in your own it's your problem i want to see it in my life because I like the way uh, Apostle Sean Smith put it. He said, uh, if, if, if you hear the gospel and you're not joyful, only two things have certainly happened. One, either you have not heard the gospel, or two, you heard it and you did not believe. And it's all about the resurrection, which means if you hear it and you believe, you will be joyful. Amen. Because there is nothing to hold on to. So now that you have the resurrection, and now you have to understand because he goes back now even to the person listening to the message and he's saying that if you do listening to it and what we are saying is a lie then your faith is also futile so the people we are preaching to and everybody we are speaking to i mean and they are believing then they are also believing a lie so it is not working but now we get to the point where we say but what if there is a resurrection then we are no longer liars. Amen. Yes, we are no longer liars. And what we are preaching is not empty. Amen. We are preaching life. Amen. We are preaching what it is. Amen. So you realize that we are, we are actually being witnesses to the fact of what the Father proclaimed even before now. Amen. For he said it. This is what is going to happen. It was said. And when he says it, it becomes a fact. He will raise him from the dead, and that is what he did. So we are not false witnesses, because as the father promised, that is what he did. And in that, he established what he had for his project, man. So even you listening, it's clear that your faith now is also not futile. Because you believe in a truth, and in an unshakable truth, something that cannot be taken away from you so it is clear that what we are testifying we are testifying to a christ that has been raised we are testifying to a resurrection that is real and that is true amen, amen. amen. oh thank you father Hallelujah. thank you lord Hallelujah. and that's why you know to just bring you to speed and put it up together you know what i enjoy very greatly is when i heard christ himself cry in the book of John, chapter number 12, uh, 23 to 24. And he says, and Jesus answered saying, the hour is come for that the son of man should be glorified. And he continues, says, verily, verily, I say unto you, except a corn of wheat fall into the ground and die, it abideth alone. But if it die, but if it die, <laughs> it bringeth forth much fruit. And why is he saying this? Because we have to get this straight. Why is he saying this? Because he goes now to tie into what he knew was going to happen after the resurrection. So he's tying on to that to get back to what we have just been saying. That this is what the resurrection is going to do. Bring up life. Raise up every other one. So because just to bring us to speed. At the end of John 11, what is happening? He just raised up Lazarus from the dead. 
I mean, as a foreshadow of his own resurrection. And the beginning of John 12, we, we are seeing uh, uh, the, anoint, the anointing that is done unto him with the alabaster jar, and to show us the fact to pre, uh, uh, I, I want to say, uh, to pre-shadow, foreshadow his what? His, uh, his burial. So this is what is happening. And then we, we move on, continue in the middle of it. He's now uh, doing his thing on uh, uh, um, uh, uh, the uh, triumphant entry. And after the triumphant entry, this is what he is giving us. And he is letting us understand at this point that there is something great that is going to happen. He is answering somebody who comes to ask him a question. And he tells him, he tells him that. Say so the hour is come. The time don't reach. <laughs> the time don't come. Yes. The hour is come for the Son of Man <laughs> to be glorified. That the Son of Man should be glorified. And he says, Verily, verily, I say unto you. And be careful when Jesus starts with verily, verily. Because he's like, don't play with this one. This thing I am telling you, you can take it to the bank and come back. Take it anywhere. That's what he's saying. And he says, verily, verily, I say unto you, except a corn of wheat fall into the ground and die, it abideth alone. But if it die, so did that corn of, of wheat fall to the ground, into the ground? Yes, did sir. it die? Yes, and sir. when it rose up again, what happened? Yes. Thank you, Lord. What happened? Yes. What happened? <laughs> it came out. Yes, my resurrected. Amen. And he says it's not only going to bear fruit, mm -hmm. but it will bear what? Much, Much fruit. Much fruit. <laughs> I don't know whether you know that you are part of the much fruit. Ah, ah, hallelujah. Yes, sir. This is awesome. So I want everybody to ask himself that question. That is what Jesus is saying. Put it in your mind. But if it die, if it die, and he is also getting into the ground, you have to understand the way Jesus is speaking to these people. And he's wanting them to, un because he can only use the language that they will understand. Because before now, the man was spiritually dead. Today we understand these things because the spirit of God is in us and we are risen. We are the resurrected man, the spiritual man. So we can decipher these things. But before now, he could only use this like this to explain to them. So today we see the grain of wheat that f went into the ground, into the womb of the earth. And on the third day, it came out. And when it came out, I don't know where you were, whether you remained in the grave. But I know that I came out. And I know that all of those who had died before him in Christ also came out. Amen. And all of us are out Amen. in Jesus' name. Amen. So I don't know where you stand. But I believe in the resurrection. And that is what I hold on to. And that is what is keeping me to believe till today. That is what is giving me the courage and the encouragement to speak to you. So we've gotten it straight. Amen. And I know we are living this place. It's not that we're getting convinced today. But we have been convinced before we got in here. We are reminding ourselves of this fact every other day in our life. And we are saying this is our life. It's not because of today. It's what we have always believed. It is, uh, it is actually the foundation of everything we're doing. It's out of the foundation when we're talking about ourselves because it all pointed to this. And there, there is the resolution of everything. And today I've come to tell you that there is nothing you lack. There is nothing you, you're supposed to be afraid of. In that resurrection, you've been given life. You are resurrected. It's not what used to be. The sin nature is gone. Everything is gone. I mean, you're free. Yes, you're free. You're free. So, I will put it this way. 
I know many people, they always say this when people die, but I believe it goes to people who are living. I'll ask you to rest in peace, in the peace of the Lord, because that resurrection has given you peace and has brought you rest. In the name of Jesus' name, and God's people say, Amen.